get started? Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. I think everyone who's going to be here is here. Uh, thanks, everyone, okay. for coming. And then uh, if you have questions, any comments, throw them in the chat. Either Katie will answer them, I'll answer them, or we'll have a Q&A at the end, too. So we'll bring the webcams back on and, and kind of wrap things up towards the end. And uh, I think that's it. I think we're ready to get started. Cool. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for coming here today and to talk about 3D Experience Works and specifically about 3D Experience SolidWorks and how SolidWorks has evolved over the years. So we're not just talking about a, about a design software anymore. We're talking about an entire portfolio of software for designing, simulating, manufacturing, and managing your data. So as a brief introduction, my name's Steven. I'm an application specialist over in the Nashua office for Solid Experts. And for me, I really enjoy both teaching and learning from others. So I you know, do training courses, do webinars like this, and I really find that the best way to learn anything is to try and teach it. Because when you're teaching it, so inevitably somebody asks a, a very difficult question that makes you reconsider everything you know. And for me, just sharing that passion and sharing that enjoyment is, is what drives me to learn new technology. And that's well, what's and if cool. I can just add, can I just add, you are so good at um, explaining things to a non-engineer like myself. So I appreciate um, your passion for teaching. Anyway, well, sorry. I now don't set the bar too high, all right? <laughs> but um, <laughs> we don't want to, I'm, I'm trying to work in an enter Mr. Sandman type uh, pun here, and I just, I can't make it work. Um, <laughs> But uh, you missed the turn the page song title from Metallica. Just saying, oh, throwing it out there. Turn so the, you're so good. The, the bad puns are out today. But <laughs> instead of Metallica, what we're going to be talking about is the 3D Experience SolidWorks product, and this involves a lot of different pieces that we're going to kind of step through to get you up to date on what the new technology is, how you use it, and where it's going down the road. So we're going to talk about the platform. What is a platform? We're going to talk about the interface and what looks different from your standard SolidWorks product. Then we're going to dive into the software itself. So we're going to have a live demonstration. I'll show you some of the workflows that you would use while working with the product uh, with a company called Biodapt with some of their models here. And then we'll wrap up by talking about the ecosystem, about how the integration of 3D Experience SolidWorks into the, the Dassault platform gives you more potential. And it, it gives you potential in a lot of different ways. So what we're going to start out with is obviously the platform. What is the platform? And when we say platform, what do we mean? Well, remember that Dassault Systems is a very large company with a ton of different brands. Each of these brands specifically target uh, a, a type of work that someone does. So for example, SolidWorks is used by designers everywhere. You have Simulia Works that focuses on the simulation. Delmia Works is an ERP system. And Anovia Works is a PLM product data management system. And we can break those down into even more detail because each of these in and of itself is a fully fledged product. So for example, if, if you're here today, you've probably been using SolidWorks somewhere between the last two to 20 years. So this is a full design solution made for engineers, manufacturers, in order to create your products. But you know, Dassault Systems has realized that you don't just need a design software these days. You need simulation. So simulation is the abacus-based solver that Dassault Systems uses uh, that is used for high-level finite element analysis. And the idea is that each of these products Delmia Works. Delmia Works is a full-blown ERP system, so integrating your machine shops, uh, making sure that your end-to-end -end management, you're ordering stock when you need it, you are making sure that the components are available on time and you're meeting your deadlines. And finally, Anovia Works, the idea of working with data, so managing the life cycle of your products, making sure that you're not using obsolete components, making sure that you have the approvals you need to move forward. And all of these together are what make the new platform 
called the 3D experience. And before I get any further, let's talk about what a platform is. So what we're used to in uh, you know, SolidWorks world, where I'm from, is working on our desktop. So here you have kind of your stereotypical engineer who works on their computer, creating models, creating software. But right now, there's not really a great integration with the cloud. Uh, you know, SolidWorks five years ago really didn't have much cloud support. Well, what we're doing today is we're looking at a product that is going to bridge the gap between your local installation of SolidWorks and the cloud. And when I say the cloud, I'm talking about all of the apps, services, and content that come along with DSO systems. So different design apps such as XDesign and XShape, and that simulation, ERP, and data management uh, brands that I mentioned earlier are all located on the cloud. And what we've done today and what we're going to be taking a look at is how 3D Experience SolidWorks manages to be not only a local app, not only a cloud product, but is this new kind of product that's going to merge your experience and give you access to a larger ecosystem uh, of software. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it called like a a new version of SolidWorks. If you you know, as a way to yeah, explain. Yeah, exactly. And and this isn't to necessarily replace the SolidWorks you have. If right. you are comfortable working on your desktop SolidWorks, absolutely no problem. That's not going to change. What this product is looking to do, and and where SolidWorks has kind of grown to, this new product is focused on adding an extra step in the center to connect your desktop to the cloud. So for those of you who want to continue working with your standard SolidWorks, no problem. For those of you who want access to the cloud ecosystem of Simulia, Delmia, and Anovia, the idea of having data management in the cloud, the idea of having uh, tasks and projects all cloud-based, well, now there is a route to work with your favorite design software, SolidWorks, while also taking advantage of the cloud. So it's another option. It's not replacing anything, but it is a new version moving forward. And that's what brings us to the 3D Experience platform. And when I say platform, it, it's this nebulous idea that it's a way that each different person in their role communicates and works with each other. So here we have different roles, uh, what you know, you might fall under the industrial design engineer, you might have someone for simulation or engineering, uh, you know, there's executives and sales, all these different roles and jobs that people do day to day. And what the 3D experience platform does is it allows you to communicate and collaborate between those individual roles and take advantage of your different tools. Specifically, uh, you know, for example, of where we're talking today, you know, we're mostly designers, at least I'm a mechanical engineer here. And what I'm going to be focusing in on is the idea of using a design role, so either for design or engineering, and the tools that I need in order to collaborate with my coworkers, in order to manage my data, to make sure I'm not uh, replicating data, to make sure that I'm not losing data and to make the models. So really what a role is, is a combination of tools that allows you to do yeah. your job. Yeah, and just to say the, that business innovator um, role, it's kind of like if you're on social media, which you know most of us are, um, it's, it's almost, it's like an, uh, it's like that almost is, is the best way to describe it, so. Yeah, so collaborative business innovator, it's not, meant to be something complicated. It's not difficult. What it is is a method of communication yes. that's directly yes. integrated into this cloud system, into the platform. And by being directly integrated, it makes life a lot easier to, to collaborate, to communicate, and to make better product. Okay, so I've talked a lot in the abstract, but what I want to talk about now is 3D Experience SolidWorks 
and specifically the user interface. So everyone here is pretty used to seeing SolidWorks. And so when you're using 3D Experience SolidWorks, what is going to happen is you're going to be using an application called SolidWorks Connected. And let's take a look at what SolidWorks Connected looks like. Well, if you've been using SolidWorks for any amount of time, this screen really shouldn't scare you because it's almost exactly the same as your stereotypical SolidWorks um, instance. So here, you'll notice in the upper left corner, yes, it says SolidWorks Connected rather than SolidWorks. So there is slight differences in terms of how it's set up. But in general, the UI is very similar and easy to work with. So over here, right in the task pane area, you know, you don't necessarily have the same, uh, some of the same tools. So maybe you don't have the DriveWorks logo, but instead you still have access to your design library, appearances, the community forums. You have everything you're used to working with with inside of SolidWorks at your fingertips. But there's a catch because you're integrated directly with the 3D Experience platform. Now you have access to a ton of different data management tools and search functionalities that otherwise you wouldn't have. So for example, this is a search over on that right task pane, uh, similar to the way, say, a PDM system would work, that's able to find information about SolidWorks files or posts in the communities and other information. Opening files is pretty similar. You're just going to open up your different files. Uh, you know, okay, and we've all seen the uh, the slightly shifted home base there. But in terms of a software that you're comfortable with, you have your options when opening products. You still have the ability to open up in lightweight or large design review or resolved. When you're opening your parts from the cloud, you have your recent results. You can filter. You can search. You have everything you're used to working with inside of this UI. Now, here's where the fun starts. When you <laughs> go to save, mm -hmm. I was gonna say, and I think I know what you're gonna say next, but this isn't SolidWorks in the cloud, right? It's there's still a level of it's on your computer. Exactly. So SolidWorks Connected, which is part of the 3D Experience SolidWorks, is still a desktop application. So right. you're still downloading it. Uh, this time, instead of downloading it from the SolidWorks download page, you download it from the platform, but it's still running on your local machine. Good. Okay. The difference here is that when you go to save a file, you save it into the cloud. So you're saving it onto the So Systems 3D Experience servers, and this becomes your primary source of truth, meaning that that part is now inside of the platform and you can build off of it, you can use it in different applications, you can send it to other people, or you can even save it out as your standard SolidWorks part and send it to a vendor who doesn't have 3D experience SolidWorks. So, or I don't have SolidWorks on my computer, but I'm connected to the platform, I can manipulate that. Exactly. Solid, right, okay. So that way, for anyone who doesn't have SolidWorks, you're able to utilize the tools on the platform to show the data and, and interact with the parts and other pieces of information. So it's not all about parts, but I like to talk about parts because that's what I usually make. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's go ahead and look at the software. All right, so we've talked a lot of talk, but let's look at some of the collaboration and development that we can do using the software. And we're going to start out with 3D Swim. And 3D Swim is the idea that every team needs to communicate. Now, let's take a project example here, and I'm gonna give Biodapt an introduction in a second, but basically we're developing a prosthetic for a leg. And some of the things that might need to be communicated between the team are this pins in the wrong location. During testing, we had failure at this back uh, socket head cap screw, or maybe that we just need to design a cover and finish off the four bar linkage. Now in conventional teams that I've been on, we end up using a variety of tools to communicate, right? 
So maybe you're taking a picture of it, a screenshot, and then you mark it up and put it into paint, and then you put it over into Outlook. Maybe you're using Slack to go and send messages back and forth. Uh, you know, and there's some other ones out there, Dropbox to, to save the components. And you have all these different buckets that you're contending with. Well, let's go ahead and jump over to the 3D Experience platform and let's look at what collaboration would be. Hey, Stephen. Yes. There's a question here <clears throat> I was about to answer, but I figured I'd ask you since we're at this point. Yeah. You need a constant internet connection, right, to use SolidWorks Connected? Uh, or yes. To interact with the platform. Yes, because of the way that your parts are being saved to the platform, you would have a constant connection to the internet. So it, the way it's pulling your your license or your role in this case is directly from the platform itself. Uh, the benefit is that you don't have anything like a SNL license server. You don't have to worry about serial numbers. All of that is handled much, much easier. Okay. And then as far as, uh, there was another question, a Linux version of SolidWorks Connected? I mean, because uh, it's so browser, can't you just... Currently, currently okay. there, there is not a is. Linux version uh, of, of SolidWorks Connected any more than technically, you know, baseline SolidWorks supports Linux. Um, however, we all know there's tons and tons of workarounds to everything, but in general, uh, not not a Linux solution currently. Okay. Good questions, though. I know, right? So, introducing BioDAP real quick. So, BioDAP is this incredible company. If you went to some of the rollouts a few years back, you would have seen them. But basically, uh, Mike Schultz, incredible athlete, ended up uh, losing a leg at some point. Uh, you know, terrible accident. I do believe it was dirt biking. And what he found out is that his passion was still for dirt biking. He wanted to continue. <laughs> exactly. He wanted to continue to, to press forward. And so what he did is he designed a lower leg prosthetic that allowed him to have all the functionality that, say, a normal leg would have and, and to compete at the highest level. Yeah, he was at uh, 3D Experience World in Nashville, and it was so inspiring because um, he just he didn't he make the prototype just out of his garage or something like that. Exactly, the the first prototype was <laughs> really just thrown together. It was a a very simple linkage system thrown together in his garage, uh, and then you know it's it's grown into something much much larger. There's an entire yeah. team, uh, you know, designing manufacturing these components for for people. To, to help them get where they want to be in sports and, and in day-to-day -day life. Now, I'm currently on the cloud. I'm logged into to Edge, I think is the browser I chose for today um, by pure hack, happenstance. And what I want to do is I want to show you guys some of the flexibility that you have in terms of collaboration. So. Rather than having a string of emails and, and memos and Slack conversations, 3D Swim offers a single location to collaborate and coordinate with your team. So in this case, we're looking at our BioDAP project here. We have a Swim community giving some background information, links to the YouTube page and some interviews about you know uh, the most recent developments in the product. And we have information about design changes. So here we have a post. Okay, we need to finish the four bar linkage and we'll need to cover the components for safety before we can go ahead and move to manufacturing. And what we can do is we can look at that product. So this is 3D Play, another app inside of the 3D Experience platform, another part of that collaborative business innovator. And it allows you to do more than eDrawings does. So it allows you to look at your models, look at explode views, uh, all within the platform without ever needing to say, create them yourself. Now, let's see, they want to finish the four bar link kitchen cover. So as we look around here, that makes sense. We have a mounting location for the final component of the, of the linkage. So we'll work on that a little bit later. And obviously we'll need to cover this hydraulic. What else do we need to do? Well, scrolling through the uh, collaboration with the 3D Swim, we see, okay, we have an image here, somebody posted. 
that uh, we need to get to work on. So we're seeing too much deflection in this pin. So we have to redesign it and incorporate into the lower bracket. All right, so this lower bracket needs to somehow support the pin. And we also need to validate the range of motion when the pin is inserted at the inner location. So you know, maybe a customer said, hey, when I put it into the second location, we don't have the, uh, the fluid movement that we did before. So the idea here is we have tons of information and without going in the details on all of the, the capabilities and everything you can do, we have a method of communicating all in one location that's all searchable and filterable. Oh my God, think of all the emails that would have to go back and forth and it's all like right there. It's so cool. Exactly. So in, in this example too, let's go ahead and say, I'm going to start working on this. You know, yeah, let Nikita know. I'll go ahead and let Nikita now know that uh, I'm going to go ahead and start working on those models. And we're going to move into using 3D Experience SolidWorks. So now let's talk about SolidWorks Connected, which is the SolidWorks application within 3D Experience SolidWorks. And we're going to go in and we're going to make these changes. So we've identified that this bracket has some issues. We need to relate it together. We need to create some sort of support system for the component. So adding a flange here. And let's look at what our workflow would be inside of SolidWorks. So I have SolidWorks open and I know that um, that model was floating around on the platform. I saw it there. So why don't I just go ahead grab it and find the Moto Knee and VF assembly. I'm just going to drag and drop it into SolidWorks itself. So it open and okay, got it. So I'm from my web browser, just dragging and dropping into SolidWorks to open my model. And I'm able to have my entire assembly load seamlessly. Note that the main view you're used to looking at here is the uh, 3D experience connector inside of SolidWorks Connected. And that's where we can see the complete assembly structure, including revisions, descriptions, and maturity states. But we don't need to get all wrapped into that now. Instead, let's go ahead and just make our changes like we would in any other SolidWorks assembly. So first things first, I need to make this change. I need to go ahead and make a new bracket that reaches this pin. So I'll go ahead and open up this subassembly to work on it. We'll go ahead and get rid of the previous bracket and pin. Those aren't going to work for us anymore. So we'll just go ahead and suppress out those components or delete them, whichever we're feeling like. And obviously, uh, we don't need these anymore either. So we'll get rid of those. Now let's go ahead and make a new part. So just like any good SOLIDWORKS user, control N to make my new component, we're gonna go in and we're going to start using SOLIDWORKS in, in the way you've been using it for years. So there's really nothing different uh, about making this bracket. So here we can add the smart dimensions to size our bracket, say it's 25, by 65, we'll go ahead and extrude that out. So using a boss extrude, we're using the software that we're used to using in the exact same way that you know everyone's been using it for, for forever. It's, it's very intuitive, very easy to use, and <clears throat> very streamlined. I can do that, Stephen. I know. <laughs> took the essentials class and then proved everyone you could. <laughs> well, day one and two. Day two is a little scary for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did, it did not go quite as smoothly as was planned. Uh, no. But you see, you never got to the part where you can use the selection manager in order to, uh, to quickly select different edges to create your fillets and the power of creating holes here. So no, 
We'll go ahead and make a new whole wizard feature on this face. We can have our favorite set up any way we want. So in this case, we're just setting up uh, a through hole with our counter sinks on both ends. And for the position, we just need to set up the position sketch. So we'll go ahead and place these two points to locate our holes. These holes have all of their metadata with them. So when we, if we were to create a drawing later down the road, it, we would have the correct hole callouts all set up. Um, so we'll go ahead and smack some dimensions on these. Uh, 10 from the outside. Sure, and then we'll add the gap. And we could, of course, go and interrogate the previous model in order to determine all these dimensions. But at this point, I think most people are comfortable with what SolidWorks can do on the fly. So we're creating our model in a way that's easy, intuitive, and you know, pretty quick in terms of making the changes we need using the trick of going backwards in order to create my tangent relationship into an arc, grabbing my drag and drop functionality in order to make a coincident relationship, and then just making my smart dimensions to add a size. You know, something that as a SolidWorks user, you've probably done thousands of times. Uh, and this one, let's go ahead and make that 25. And we'll go ahead also, let's select some edges and we'll go ahead and convert those edges into our model. Trim up using the power trim from the gesture menu. And now we're ready to work with our sketch. Now something kind of cool in case you haven't used it is the ability to use the Insta 3D in order to create 3D geometry. All you have to do is grab the edge, pull, and if you hold M, it'll switch to pulling via the midplane. And if we want to make this 36, all we have to do is switch over to the ruler, which will snap to the nearest dimension. So I'm moving my cursor over the dimension to make our extrusion. So a very easy way to make our uh, model here. And of course, now we're going to have to have the hydraulic slide into uh, a hole here. We want to run through. So let's go ahead and do this from the midplane. And we'll just give it enough clearance to bridge the gap. Now, in terms of the next hole, what we want to do is go ahead and make an advanced hole. And for making an advanced hole, we're going to select both of our faces and select the advanced hole. And it has a ton of different settings for creating countersinks on the near and far sides, through holes, et cetera. And basically you can build your hole up. Now in our case, we have a favorite that we like to use of the M6 shoulder screw. That's going to be a through hole followed by a threaded and capped area. In which case, oh, and of course I need to add my position. Embarrassing for a SolidWorks user, that's for sure. And we'll just snap that to the center of the arc. And last but not least, something you can never get away without doing, let's go ahead and make sure that our material is set. You can select from the material database or from your favorites. Go ahead and make that 6061 aluminum. Now, before we get any further, let's go ahead and make some custom properties. So inside the file properties, you can add things like uh, your description. Uh, you can add the number itself. So in our case, our previous assembly, we were working off of uh, 17 dash uh, 899. So we'll just make this 17900. And the reason you do this, and especially using 3D Experience SolidWorks, is that these attributes will all be searchable down the road. So you'd be able to go into the software and actually key those in in order to find this bracket even if you don't happen to remember what it was called. You could search by the day it was created, you could search by uh, who created it, and you'd be off to the races. Uh, last but not least, let's go ahead and save this. So now here's where we diverge from your typical SolidWorks um, workflow per se. 
when we save it, we're going to go ahead and give it a name. And it's going to save into the cloud. And now that it's in the cloud, we have a single source of truth, meaning that we are able to make sure that if anyone else goes to use 17900, they're going to be using the same component, the same part. Now, we're not quite done yet. There was a hole in here, so we can use some of the previous fun tricks of uh, SolidWorks. Now, if I had deleted this bracket, I don't really remember what it's called. I remember that it's a lower bracket. So rather than going and trying to search through your typical folders and files, all we need to do is to go into the search functionality and search for lower bracket. And what that's gonna do is it's going to find any parts and models that have lower bracket in any of the different attributes and allow you to open those. So in this case, I have my older lower bracket and I'll open that up. And we'll go ahead and we're going to use one of SolidWorks uh, more fun functionalities, in my opinion, of being able to take features. I'll go ahead and select all of these, rotate around so I can see the bottom hole, and just drag and drop those onto my component. We'll go ahead and dangle the relationships and reset those up. And then we'll go in and fix the position for our new model. Uh, those are all things that you can do with your desktop SolidWorks. It's not special to 3D Connector. So the idea is that anything, uh, most things that you can do with your desktop SolidWorks. I mean SolidWorks, SolidWorks Connector, that's what I meant to say. So like, sorry. Uh, yeah, so these are, this is something <laughs> that you can do with baseline SolidWorks. Okay. Uh, besides, of course, the just searching for any piece of information from uh, the platform here. So searching by lower bracket then gives you uh, your component. And then we're ready to put it into our model. So here, we'll go ahead and bring this back up. And we're ready to just use uh, the drag and drop functionality of SolidWorks. Let's see here, let me try that again to go. Oh, I forgot to hold Alt. In order to kind of place this into our assembly. And we'd be able to mate that in here with, with the workflows you're used to. So we're making our changes very quickly. And the idea is that you're you're still using SolidWorks to make your changes the same way you would always. Um, and, and there's some shortcuts I can, of course, use in order to make this quicker. Uh, but one <laughs> other thing I want to make sure I can do is I want to make sure that uh, I can place this pin correctly into my component. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that I can find the correct size pin. That pin's going to need to be about this length for your shoulder head screw. I can see that distance here is the 25 millimeters. Which means I can then, and actually let me even do this. I'll do it one better. Rather than adding it to the top level assembly, let's go ahead and just get rid of the top level assembly here. And let's do it through the sub assembly, which is where you would normally add it. Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to make sure it's in the right place. Um, and then this way, we're able to uh, obviously add our component, fix our back bracket, and replace it on the fly here. And we have completed one of our two tasks. So the idea is that we've put our new bracket in. I need to find new hardware. And remember, it is a uh, shoulder screw that is 25 in length. So if I was working in SolidWorks, you might have to, to go find that or to, to use a toolbox. But on the platform instead, we're just going to look for 
uh, you know, shoulder. And we're going to search that up and see what options we have. 13 results. Okay, let's add more details. I want it to be an M6 hole. Um, excellent. And let's say that, let's include the 25 because we know that the, the gap is 25 here. And That's we come up cool. with any result on the entire platform. Uh, and in this case, we don't need a, a low profile. So we'll go ahead and just drag this in, add it from our platform. Move this out of the way for the time being and mate that in. And I just went ahead and copied it. So in terms of your SolidWorks workflows, this is something that you are extremely used to doing. Now I need to go ahead and let's go ahead and increase this whole size, right? So that we can have access to the screw. The assemblers will thank me later. And when I rebuild, we'll go ahead and have a larger hole. So once again, what you're used to doing within SolidWorks, task one, done. Now, That's task awesome. two. This motion seems to be working fairly well, but we're getting reports that in the second position, there's some interference. And, and we know that from the community post. So what we're gonna do is, you know, go into the screw, change its concentric mate here. And rather than being mated to the second hole, we'll just put it to the first hole. And note, everything is going to dynamically update. Uh, and now we can go ahead and follow the secondary path of our linkage. Now, here's the deal. I don't know about you, but it looks like it's moving fine. So we can use one of those typical tools like interference detection to go ahead and um, check whether or not there's interferences. And I just went ahead and separated out some of the fasteners. Uh, and if we click through, we'll notice that yes, there is indeed some pretty bad interference up in this location. And if we wanted to go even further to understand how that's preventing movement, we could go ahead and use a section view in order to continue working with our part. And we can verify, yes, there's obviously an issue right here that we're coming into conflict. And if you wanted to, you could go far as to go in and run active collision detection by dragging certain components. So I can say, okay, well, I want to see, you know, how these parts interact or collide. And it's going to go ahead and stop your movement and say, okay, you've had a collision. It makes a little ding. And you can figure out what your problem is, what your mechanical issue is. In our case, it's an easy fix. We can just go in and update this pocket to be slightly larger, make sure to rebuild, and now we don't have to worry about the interference. So we've made our changes, let's load it into the platform. And this is where you'll really get to see some of the power of SolidWorks. We're not worried about working uh, over someone, we're not worried about taking in data, and overriding it because when we go to save this part so just going over into the 3d experience window and hitting save on our top level assembly a few things are going to happen first it's going to go and it's going to figure out which components that we needed to edit and change it's going to flag those and say hey you don't have a reservation you don't control the data so you can't make updates to that well, that's okay. I know that I'm the one who's going to fix this project. So I'm going to go ahead and say, go ahead and resolve the warnings. Anything that no one else has checked out, go ahead and check it out for me so that I can make my updates. So you don't have to worry about, you know, did I check it out beforehand? Now well, I can also I see know that. That's cool. Yeah, it makes life a lot easier. 
Uh, we also have the, of course, the entire, uh, some of the power of Anovia, which is the data management. So let's go ahead and say, yep, we'll go ahead and make a new revision of the Modoni uh, subassembly here. And we can go ahead and decide which components that we'd like to have a new version of. Or you could also decide not to uprev everything. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and say, what if we don't make a new reservation quite yet? What if we wait for confirmation that these changes are what we want to do? Right, get like approvals and whatever. Exactly. I went ahead and check release after upload. And we're going to go ahead and upload our data to the cloud. Now, we were able to use kind of your, your standard SOLIDWORKS workflows, but with an even more powerful system to add upgrades to the knee. There's also a whole nother level of data management called PLM or product lifecycle management. And where you see that at play in my model currently is inside of the maturity state, you'll notice that a lot of my hardware, uh, some of my different screws have a state of release. Well, what we can do is Every component inside the 3D Experience platform is assigned a lifecycle state. And based on the lifecycle state, you can block it from being changed, require certain permissions to change, have to oh. move it back to a new revision, and you can use it to control your data and to make sure that you know mistakes don't happen, you don't lose old data, you obsolete correct parts uh, as you're working through your part. And that is something that you know, if we want to talk about life cycle, we could probably spend an entire, you know, three hours going through the, the bits and pieces of life cycle management. So not only do you get the kind of revision management that you're used to inside of PDM, you get the, the product life cycle management or PLM, which is a whole nother level of power. All right. So that was kind of a lot, but that was using SolidWorks Connected in a workflow that you're pretty familiar with. Now, we made a bracket, we replaced it. But remember, we had a couple more tasks to do. Yeah, you gotta cover that foot. Exactly. So let's talk about X Design, and specifically cloud-based applications in order to do different tasks. So in this case, uh, I have the foot, I need to add the linkage to the back part, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, here's the fun part. We'll go ahead, close our models. We don't necessarily need to have everything open at once. And I'm sitting here as a SolidWorks user. Maybe I don't like to open the cloud. Maybe I don't wanna go and see what people have assigned me today. Well, from directly within your SolidWorks Connected as part of the 3D Experience SolidWorks, you can go and you can see what tasks you have to work on directly from the platform. So in this case, in my to-do list, I've been assigned a couple tasks. So we have to assemble the link and we have to create the cover. I can go ahead and look further. We have to assemble the link. Somebody has created the VF uh, the and put it into the VF foot project and remove some material to reduce the weight. What are they even talking about? What is the link? Well, because it's PLM, and because we have that data inside the cloud, you can directly attach files to tasks. So in this case, I say, oh, well, um, here's the link that they want me to add. We'll go ahead and open that up. And they want me to attach it to the VF2 foot. Uh, so I'll go ahead and open that up too. And while I'm working on this, I'll go ahead and say, you know what? Let my manager, let my team know and I'm working on the assemble link task, and I'm gonna move it to the in-work state so that if anyone's curious on the progress of the platform or the progress of the tasks, they know that you're, you're on it, you're working on it. Now, let's go ahead and make the changes. So in this case, we have our component that we were looking at before, we have the VF2 foot, but we also have this link component. Now notice this link component was created within X design. However, you're still able to open and interact with it within SolidWorks itself. 
So in this case, I have a link. I'm going to go ahead and bring this on over and put it onto my model uh, and just hit tab here to flip the direction it's mating. One of the many, many matrix inside of SolidWorks. And we'll just go ahead and make that concentric to add our link. And even better, let's go ahead and take advantage of the fact that this is symmetrical and we'll just uh, mirror it across the right plane here to put the link on both sides. And you know, I don't really need the link anymore, so here we go. Now, you guys have seen a bunch of hardware, I'm not gonna bore you, so I'll just go ahead and show the additional hardware in order to attach the link. And it's time to save. So we went ahead, we added a part that was created on the cloud and we'll save our component. So just hitting Control S, we're going to walk through the save process. Now note, we'll use the same trick, anything that was uh, you know, unreserved that I need to reserve in order to update, I'll go ahead and grab uh, Control Over. I'll release them after save. And we've gone ahead and updated our component. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, I just watched a bunch of assemblies, but here is the kicker, and here where is where the 3D experience platform uh, gets to be pretty cool, is that I now have, here, I'll go ahead and expand this out. We don't need to see the tasks anymore, but inside of my assembly, you'll notice that I have links that are originated from the 3D Experience platform. So not only are there SolidWorks models, which is what we've been working with so far, but this link is from the platform. And yeah, I didn't know how you could tell the difference, but that's how, okay, very cool. Exactly, it's just, it's a piece of information. It's all about data and it's understanding where the part came from. And, and what that, that means. Text design. Exactly, so now, okay. if I wanna go ahead and make changes in X design, <clears throat> I can just go ahead and open the platform back up. And we have the ability to just say, okay, uh, here's my link. I wanna make my changes, drag and drop it into XDesign. It'll go ahead and open the part up and I can get off to the races with working on it. It also means that since we're all connected, I can go ahead and check out the different relations for this link. So in this case, I have the ability to see what this link is related to inside of the platform, just to make sure that it's not related to anything else. And there, as we indexed, it recognized that, hey, the VF2 foot is now a parent of this component. And we know that we're safe to make changes. So inside of XDesign, where is, um, excuse me, let me let me start by explaining XDesign for anyone who has not seen it. XDesign is part of the 3D Creator role, which is a completely cloud-based CAD app. So here on the left side, you have your history, just like you wouldn't say SolidWorks. On the bottom, you have your different tools. And note, if you've used SolidWorks, a lot of these are going to be very, very similar to what you're used to working on. And we're going to go ahead and just make a couple changes to this part. So in order to cut weight, we'll select the face, create a new sketch. And obviously, we're going normal to the sketch. When we select the edge, we can use the Convert Entities tool. And this is all on a you know the cloud-based application. I can take my points, drag them along. I can create a horizontal line. Notice that the H pops up to indicate that it's going to be making that geometric relation similar to the way that 3D Experience, uh, uh, that SolidWorks usually works. And of course, you can convert any line to construction. Now, some of the cool things you can do, obviously, is selecting all the lines and it's smart enough to recognize that you're probably trying to mirror your component. And we can also add, say, a dimension. So whatever we think is a reasonable amount of material to remove. 
to cut uh, to to lighten this link. Now here's where we can have some fun. Now I don't know about you, but the number of times that I've accidentally clicked on the wrong feature is astronomical. So here I just selected a sweep with my sketch, and obviously that's not going to work. Well, X Design has a really cool super feature that allows you to toggle between the type of feature that you're using. So from sweep, resolve, uh, revolve, extrude. And it allows you to change what you're doing. So no matter what you're doing, I can say, okay, I'm going to be using my sketch here to cut. And I can select either the sketch itself or individual piece of that line. And we have our typical through wall both to go ahead and remove that material. And it's intelligent, so you have the ability to go ahead and, of course, add your fillets. Everybody's got to love you, got to love the fillets, based on whatever rules you want. So here we have the automatic fillet tool, that's even more powerful than that in SolidWorks. And we could finally go ahead and add a chamfer around the outside, and it has the automatic tangent propagation. Bada bing, bada boom, our part is done. So. So that's actually better doing that in X Design than it is in actual SolidWorks. Is that what you, that what you just said? Yeah. So a lot of a lot of what I just did there is is as easy, if not easier, to do in X Design. That's and pretty cool. It's completely cloud based. So you know you can do it on a tablet or laptop. You know from home. You don't need to have your SolidWorks station um, set up and going. And then to like totally, hopefully not confuse everybody. You've been shown a SolidWorks connected. Um, you don't need to get SolidWorks connected to use X-Design. You can just get, um, you know, be completely in the cloud. Uh, correct. So you don't necessarily need to have um, SolidWorks connected to have X-Design. It's part of the 3D Experience SolidWorks uh, package. Yeah, 3D so it's creator. a tool that yeah. you can use um, from 3D Creator that is, you know, very good for creating these edits. Or you can use it in addition to SolidWorks connected or desktop SolidWorks. So exactly. Very, so the idea um, is there that was have more tools. More tools, right? And there was a question. It's like, well, why would I get SolidWorks connected if I have a desktop um, SolidWorks? And that would be another role called collaborative designer, which we can talk about later. But I just wanted to be sure to answer that for. Yeah, that and that's a good question. If you have SolidWorks already there is a method of connecting to the cloud and getting access to the tools we're talking about. So yeah. it's not only something that SolidWorks, uh, 3D Experience SolidWorks can do, normal SolidWorks can do it as well with a connector, uh, but the 3D Experience SolidWorks is kind of the, the next generation of SolidWorks in that it was designed specifically to work with these tools uh, and okay. to work with that interoperability. Which brings us to our last segment here, about X shape. And that's the idea here that we need to create a component to cover the foot. Uh, so what I'm going to go is into my task to create the cover. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, drag this in here and make sure that, make sure my Novia relations is set up correctly. Uh, here we go. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the relations of the foot uh, as it loads. I could alternatively also look for that component anywhere uh, on the cloud. So just even by searching uh, VF2 foot, I'd be able to go and find the component that I'm looking for on the cloud itself. Uh, so here, I just have the component and I could instead drag and drop it in. And now go ahead and open this up. And what I want to show you here is how the interoperability works within the 3D Experience platform. So right now I'm in X Design. I'm going to go ahead and open up the foot. You can tell where the data came from. So we have a lot of SolidWorks components as well as the link component from uh, that that we went ahead and added from X Design. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a new component uh, into the assembly here. 
and we're going to make the cover from kind of a more top-down design approach. And by double-clicking it, I'm going to activate that I'm working on this component itself. Now, you may be wondering, well, I'm in X-Design. I thought you were talking about X-Shape. Well, in X-Design, of course, I could go into the surfacing tools and, and create this shape. However, it's significantly more difficult to do that than using a, a tool that's been created specifically for push-pull surface creation. And that tool is X-Shape. So, so X-Design has surfacing features? I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. X-Design does have uh, a good number of surfacing features. Uh, but but as, this is, yeah, this is way better. This is, uh, the shape is really cool. Yeah, and and what it comes down to is you can do anything with surfacing. I have no doubt in that. I love surfacing. But sometimes it's easier to just select a primitive, plop it into your model, and then push and pull it into the shape you want. It gives you much more flexibility uh, inside of your model itself. Uh, so here we'll go ahead and we don't need all of this detail. We're just going to create a basic shape by changing the number of segments we're splitting into. We can change the size, scale it up and down, just to get it about where we want it. And now the fun really begins. And now we get to use the push-pull functionality of X-Shape in order to create this cover. So before I go anywhere, I want to go ahead and make this symmetric across the center for now. So just by adding symmetry, selecting my plane, it'll maintain my continuity across the center. If I want to make sharp edges, I can. So I can go ahead and select each of these edges, and I can go ahead and crease them, which is going to provide a hard edge to work off of. Mm. Now note, going normal too, I can just push and pull this to align to the center. And based on the normal direction of my points, I get a robot direction. If I would rather do it with respect to the X, Y, Z or to the screen, you can shift it. And here we're just going to move it to the correct positions. We're going to shift around my shape, just a very easy push pull idea and you know i can't really tell what's going on here i know there's a component under there i'm worried about let's go ahead and change the opacity so that i can see what's going on oh yeah so you can like really form it or sculpt it i should say exactly so here i could definitely go in and and, and try and get this shape to work but you know i would rather just draw what i want so in this case i'll go ahead and select and I'm going to create align entities by sketch. And then I can quite literally come in, draw what I want. <laughs> See, I can do that. <laughs> and it's going to match up to my component. So that's cool. This is something that, yes, of, of course, you could do this shape in SolidWorks. I have no doubt of it. But the amount of time that it would take in order to get this to look the way you want it to. And then finally, let's say I, I want to add a little bit of a personalization to this. I think it's it's too bland. So let's go in and I'm going to remove the symmetry, looking from the top. And we'll go ahead and just make the shape truly custom, truly that uh, industrial engineering that, uh, you know, people so know and love. So this is something that you can go in, maybe you add a flare in this area, you know, you can truly make it look how you want. Here you go. And now we have something that would conventionally be very, very difficult to model from SolidWorks, created into our part. And we can even go one step further. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is manufacturable. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this part itself. We'll go ahead and break it out into a shell. So just by using uh, you know, features to create a shelled entity, 
We'll have obviously the tangent propagation turned on. We want to remove all this bottom face. One millimeter going outward, sure, in order to cover our component. And now I'm a little worried. You know, I think I might have some negative draft. So let's go ahead and utilize our tools and check whether or not this is going to be draftable off of a base plane. And obviously we need to flip the direction here. And yeah, I actually had negative draft. So let me go ahead and fix that. So with that turned on, I can now go in, edit my feature, and I can fix my part live. So here, definitely think that maybe this point should be out a little bit more. Maybe these points are back a little bit more. And of course, this edge, get it out of here. And we're done. We have a part that's you're able to create. Uh, you know, we, we're accepting a little bit of the draft here. And we're we've created our very complicated surface component without too much effort. That's now going to be updated uh, within within our model. And the end result, the end result is that we have the ability to let everyone know what we've done. So we'll come in here and we'll go ahead and refresh our model to show everyone what we've accomplished. So uh, down here at the bottom, let's go ahead and uh, make some notes. There we have our updated pin. So we're gonna say, hey, look at this and this. We'll go ahead and add a note saying, you know, cover created, you know, and um, and link added. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. And from here we can directly post that to the swim, or I'm gonna go ahead and save that as a screenshot. It'll download, and I can go in and say, uh, you know, check out my updates. drag and drop, you know, it's, it is really that simple in order to collaborate, to work within the system. And okay, let's, let's also check out the top pins. We can also make a comment saying, uh, confirm movement and say, you know, removed material. And well, you know, maybe we should show the change in the bracket here. You know, because that is something we did. Product do. review. Yeah, You're like doing a whole product review here. Exactly. So we can say here and we're done. So the idea is that rather than having a ton of separated tools, um, you can go in and while using SolidWorks in the way that you know you're comfortable with using 3D Experience SolidWorks in order to collaborate, communicate, and to kind of connect to the ecosystem uh, very smoothly. And, so, and that brings us to our last kind of quick segment here before we well, quick, ask any questions. Yeah, there is a question that would probably be good right here. Mm -hmm. it, now, would you say that the platform um, could replace, like if you already have D uh, PDM, set up and you're using desktop SolidWorks, could the platform replace or is it intended to replace PDM? So as of right now, the, the platform isn't meant to replace PDM. Okay. However, there is uh, in, in progress a uh, basically a, a conversion path if you wanted to have that, that cloud management. If PDM yeah. works perfectly for you, uh, you can use PDM while also still leveraging a lot of the cloud tools, no problem. Uh, using the connector, but it is something that you know is is down the road as a, a PLM tool. So beyond manage, beyond the capabilities of PDM or EPDM or workgroup, you have a significant increase in in power and potential. Yeah, and people are like, you know, they kind of want to get away from that whole IT keeping up with servers. So this is an option 
that at least I've started helping customers do that. So that was a good question. Okay, sorry, keep going. So to, to wrap up here, and, and the idea is that you're using your same design tools, you have the direct integration and, and your basic workflows, but on top of that, 3D Experience SolidWorks gives you access to data management on the cloud through Anovia. You have the ability to collaborate through your whole enterprise, and you also have access to more tools like 3D Creator, 3D Sculptor, and there are a ton more. So I just showed a couple of the cloud tools, but there's Sheet Metal, there's, there's other tools that allow you to do things that you wouldn't necessarily do within SolidWorks, all while being integrated into one system. And just in terms of terminology, the role that correlates more to what your say job description is, whereas the app is just one of the tools within the role uh, that you would use. So we've been talking about 3D Experience SolidWorks where I use the application, SolidWorks Connected, each of which have a standard pro and premium level. Just like now, <clears throat> before we go any further, remember it's not yeah. in the browser. SolidWorks is being run on your local computer. You still have the exact same system requirements as before, but you do have extended capabilities. And so within the packages, when we talk about 3D Experience SolidWorks standard, you get the collaborative industry innovator, collaborative business and innovator. That's the SWIM communities, that's the PLM we saw, as well as 3D Experience SolidWorks standard and 3D Creator as a cloud creation tool. Then the next tier here is the professional. Obviously, then you get the enhanced 3D Experience SolidWorks professional and you also get the, the 3D Sculptor and 3D Creator roles. And those include the, obviously, the X shape is part of 3D Sculptor, the X design is part of 3D Creator. Uh, also in 3D Experience, uh, SolidWorks Professional and Premium, you do get access to Visualize Professional Connected, which is uh, basically the same way that SolidWorks is connected to the cloud, is Visualize Connected to the cloud. So a very powerful, top of the line rendering tool as well. And then of course in premium, we have the 3D Experience SolidWorks Premium, as well as the 3D Experience SolidWorks Simulation Designer, which is similar to the simulation that comes with uh, SolidWorks Premium today. So the idea is that you now have the ability to access all these different tools. You have you know, the SolidWorks connected, you have the simulation, uh, connected, you have draft site connected, so the ability to do 2D drawings in the Visualize. same way, working locally, but you're connected to the cloud. And then there's more tools and more tools being developed that are 100% cloud-based. So you have the 3D Creator, 3D uh, Sculptor, 3D Sheet Metal, and uh, even some more tools down the road, like rendering and things like that. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get through any questions that weren't answered real quick. Yeah, I think I, I did them, but you should probably review my answers. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> and of course, um, you know, here over at Solid Experts, if you have questions, and especially if you have questions beyond the scope of, of this call, definitely reach out and, and we can talk together about what the tool entails and what exactly uh, you know, it means down the road. So this is definitely a very new, and it's it's something that you know we're more than happy to help you guys.